So today I wanted to briefly go over some of the main exemptions to privately raised capital under securities law. Let me share my screen real quick. So what are some of the legal issues that come up when you go out and raise capital? So there's a number of different laws that come into place. Uh, the Securities Act 1933, basically you have to either register a security like stock, interest in an LLC, whatever it is, um, that has to be either registered under the Securities Act with the SEC or qualify under an exemption. And I'm gonna talk about mostly about those exemptions today. The Exchange Act, uh, couple of different sections of the Exchange Act, Investment Advisors Act, Investment Company Act, and then general corporate tax and state law compliance. So there's a lot of areas that come into play when you're raising capital. The most common uh, exemptions that you see when you're privately raising capital and not registering it with the SEC, uh, Regulation D or Reg D. And this can basically includes both Section 506B and 506C of Regulation D. And I'm going to go over those a little bit. Um, and they both have come into play when you're talking about whether you have accredited or not accredited investors. And I'm not going to go through all 17 definitions, but an accredited investor, the most common one people hear about is if you have a net worth over a million dollars without your house, or you've made over $200,000 in the last two years as an individual, or over $300,000 uh, combined with your spouse over the last two years. Those are the most common to determine that you're accredited. Now, under 506B, which is probably the most common way of privately raising capital in the US, there is no dollar limit currently. Um, you can raise an unlimited amount of money. Um, there is no general solicitation or advertising allowed. So you can't post to social media. You can't go out to people you don't know and try to get them to invest in your deal. You have to have a pre-existing substantive relationship with the potential investor. You can have an unlimited number of accredited investors, but only up to 35 people who don't qualify as accredited investors. They do have to qualify as sophisticated, meaning they have some knowledge about finance and business matters to protect their own interests. There are certain disclosure requirements. I'm not going to get into too many of the details today. I just wanted to give a quick high-level overview of both Reg D, Reg A, Reg CF, Reg Crowdfunding, uh, which are some of the most common things that you'll see out there people talk about. Rule 506C, this is also part of Reg D or Regulation D. Uh, this one also has no dollar limit. You can raise an unlimited amount of money. You can have an unlimited number of accredited investors. However, there is no non-accredited investors allowed. Everyone has to be accredited, and you do have to take an additional step under 506C to verify that they are accredited. So you have to independently get copies of tax returns, a letter from their CPA. There's a number of different methods where you can verify that they are or are not accredited. But you can also publicly advertise and generally solicit. So you can, when you see things on social media, somebody saying, hey, I'm raising capital for accredited investors only, that's usually a 506C offering that they're doing. So it's technically a private offering, but allowed to be publicly advertised. Reg CF or crowdfunding. Um, this is the one that came under the Jobs Act that most people think of as crowdfunding. Um, although a lot of times most typical crowdfunding offerings online or 506B or 506C. Reg CF, regulation crowdfunding, is a separate exemption than regulation D. Um, you are limited. You can only raise up to 5 million. It used to be a little over a million. They raised it to up to 5 million. And basically, if it's an accredited investor, um, they can invest how much ever they want per investor. So one investor could put $500,000 in. If the person is not accredited, there is a limit and there's a test that you have to plug in based on their current net worth or income, and it's a certain percentage, and that's the maximum amount that they can invest into your deal. It also has to go through a funding portal or web website that's registered. Um, and so this, the idea behind this is you get you know 500 people putting small a couple thousand dollars each in to reach potentially you know a couple million dollars 
but you are limited to only 5 million. Um, although it is through a funding portal, um, it's technically not really a general advertisement that you're allowed to do. Regulation A and Reg A plus, um, these are kind of the terms that are used now under Regulation A, where they added two different tiers. Tier one is you can raise up to $20 million, uh, and that's kind of considered Reg A. Raising up to $75 million is considered Reg A plus. Um, this is kind of like a mini IPO or public offering. So you are allowed to publicly solicit. There's certain rules on it uh, called test the waters and some other things that come into play uh, because Reg A is a pretty complex uh, offering, even though it's private and exempt. You can raise, you know, somebody who wants to raise only a million dollars with Reg A, it's probably not worth it because of the costs legally to put all this together. Uh, in some cases, you need gap financial statements um, to be provided, a bunch of other things. You have to file Form 1A with the SEC. The SEC has to review it, provide comment, and declare that basically that it's effective and that you can go raise capital. So that whole process of compiling, preparing the Form 1A, filing with the SEC, responding to comments, that is a lengthy and costly process. So most people will avoid doing Reg A, but the benefit of Reg A is you know, it's basically public and you can take accredited and non-accredited investors, and you don't have to limit it just to 35 unaccredited investors like Reg uh, 506B. There is an investment limit on how much a non-accredited investor can uh, invest into your deal, but you can take 200 uh, non-accredited investors. So there's some benefits, but the costs are can be significantly more under a Reg A offering than a 506B or 506C. Again, 506B, Regulation D, probably the most common uh, way to raise capital. So that's just kind of a quick overview of the main types, Reg A, Reg CF, and then the two parts of Regulation D, which are 506B and 506C. Uh, thank you for watching.